wants to hear a story about a tenant that committed fraud to get a tenancy at a landlord's property just so that she could live there for as long as possible without paying any rent. situation for the landlord and this is still ongoing. This particular landlord is just a regular landlord, only has one rental property, he's self-managed that property for years, never had any problems, always found his own tenants, always managed his own tenancy, his own property and everything that goes with it. A classic traditional DIY self-managing landlord. And this situation seemed no different to any other. The last tenant moved out. They looked after the property without any issues. They'd always paid their rent, no problems. So the landlord moved them out, returned their deposit and advertised the property for let. This new tenant, I'm not gonna name the tenant. I don't think that would be fair, but this new tenant came along, viewed the property and to the landlord seemed very pleasant, seemed normal, seemed like a, just a nice person. The tenant said, yeah, I'd love to live in this property. Can I apply for a tenancy? The landlord said, yes. And the landlord then started with the referencing, the credit checking and the vetting process. Now, I believe the landlord used a referencing agency and a vetting agency, a credit referencing agency to do all of those checks and everything was going through normally. This tenant even had a guarantor, perfect. Not only have you got someone who seems very pleasant, very nice, also they're providing a guarantor just in case anything goes wrong, then you always have the guarantor to rely on to pay the rent for the tenant. So everything just seemed really great. And then the references came back and they were fine, no problems, no red flags, references were good, credit checking was good, vetting was good, employment was all good, income was all good, seemed absolutely fine. So the tenant moves in and nothing seems unusual until the first month rent is due. No rent came through. The landlord approached the tenant and said, is everything okay? I noticed that there's no rent. And the tenant said, Oh yes, I've had a problem with my salary. My employer is gonna be paying it into my bank in a couple of weeks. Is that gonna be okay? Landlord said, yes, he's just a regular landlord. Landlord said, yep, yeah, that's fine. Uh, as long as you get it all sorted. Yes, absolutely will do, tenant says. Then a couple of weeks go by, no rent. Tenant says, can I just add it to the next rent payment because my employer is still having problems getting my salary to me? Landlord says, sure, that's okay. Just make sure it's done because it's now a couple of weeks late. Second month rent becomes due. Landlord doesn't see any rent coming in. So he approaches the tenant again and says, now there's two months rent that's not come through. What's happening? Tenant says, I'm in the bank right now and I'm just transferring it across. Landlord said, great. Couple of days passed, no money. Now the landlord's getting concerned. He then pursues the tenant for all of the outstanding rent and the tenant then applies for breathing space. Now this is pretty bad because now the landlord cannot pursue that tenant for 60 days, which is pretty bad. And this is where it all unravels. This tenant provided a guarantor, if you remember me saying that at the beginning. That means that whilst the landlord has to grant the tenant breathing space, the landlord is still entitled to pursue the guarantor for the rent that's outstanding. So the landlord approaches the guarantor and the guarantor says, I'm not a guarantor. I didn't agree to be a guarantor for that person. Landlord's a little bit surprised by this, looks back at the paperwork and yes, the guarantor has signed for that paperwork. The guarantor is denying 
and saying, no, I haven't signed any paperwork. I know that tenant, but that's not my signature. I did not sign for that guarantor. So now the landlord's very suspicious, obviously suspects fraud. So he approaches a solicitor because now this tenant is causing some issues and the landlord needs to take action. So he approaches a solicitor and get this, the solicitor says, I recognize that tenant's name. It turns out that that solicitor had acted for another landlord against this exact same tenant. And the last case was a fraud case where the tenant had fraudulently manipulated the whole referencing and vetting process, fraudulently completed a guarantor form on behalf of somebody else and made up their employer they made up their employer's email. They even had an email address for that employer that went to this tenant so that she could do her own employment references. She could do her own landlord references. She could do her own everything, all referencing, all checks, everything, guarantor forms, the lot. This solicitor said that this was a very complicated case and a very clever tenant who knew the system inside and out. So therefore, this tenant now has breathing space the landlord had tried to go to the guarantor and the guarantor said, no, that's not mine, no, that's not me, didn't do it. They went to the employer and the employer said, no, that's not us, don't know that person, yikes. What a nightmare for that landlord, especially because he's just a regular landlord, he's not a serial portfolio landlord property investor, he's just a regular landlord. And now he's got a tenant in that property that's not paying rent, is now not able to be pursued for a couple of months, and is seemingly very aware of how to manipulate the entire system. Now the landlord is starting to struggle financially because the landlord's still paying out mortgage payments, insurance payments, and all of those things that go with it but now the tenant's not paying any rent. And this is the worst part about this. The landlord also cannot take court action until this breathing space order has expired. And you also know, well, I think so anyway, you know that once that breathing space order has expired, there'll be something else that the tenant executes or initiates in order to get out of paying rent and get out of being evicted. So what I think is gonna happen next, and this is just a terrible situation. This is the sort of thing that puts people off investing in property and being a landlord. And these are very isolated instances. This isn't very common at all, but it's a definite risk, especially if you're a self-managing landlord. Now, as it happens, my lettings team have now taken over management of this so that we can make sure that this eviction takes place correctly and as quickly as possible. And we call this a landlord rescue service. It's basically where we take on a bad situation that a landlord is in and needs help getting out of it. And we just take over management and we just process whatever action and activity that needs to take place. Landlord rescue service. I think all letting agents should provide a landlord rescue service, in my opinion. Let me know, by the way, if you're experiencing anything like this. If you're a landlord or a letting agent that has experienced similar to this, how did you deal with it? What I believe is gonna happen next, my lettings team are now going to go through the entire eviction process, working with the solicitor to evict that tenant as quickly as possible. We've already gone through all of the compliance and legislative requirements, that's easy for me to say, just to make sure that everything is in hand, we're working with a solicitor on that, and then we're gonna evict that tenant. The big question is, how could this landlord have spotted this fraud? Bearing in mind that the majority of landlords do not use letting agents to manage their property. I find that quite scary. 
quite scary for landlords, especially nowadays. And I believe that a lot of those landlords are just traditional landlords that have always looked after their own properties and have always done things themselves and don't see a need for a letting agent because they've never had any issues or no issues that they can't sort out themselves. Nowadays, the whole landlording landscape, oh, I like that, landlording landscape, brilliant. The whole landscape for landlords has changed. It's far more serious now because there's so much legislation, it allows tenants to commit these types of offenses and activities more often. And you always find that. In any industry where there's tons of legislation against the provider, I won't say against, but that the provider has to follow, and in this case, it's the landlords, there are so many more opportunities for tenants to commit fraud, to manipulate the system, to exploit the system for their own gain. And there's an even more worrying part about this. Anybody that knows me knows that I'm a very dedicated father of my two boys. And I speak for every parent, I hope, when I say that as a parent, you just want to lead by example and do the best you can for your kids. Well, this particular tenant has a child. That worries me a lot because if you are a parent and you are prepared to do all of this, just to try and avoid paying your rent. And you're quite happy for this poor landlord who's just a regular person. And you're quite happy for them to suffer just so that you can save your monthly rent. What example are you setting for your child? And secondly, what are you encouraging your child to become? Well, it's inevitable that if you continue with that, then your child is gonna follow in your footsteps. And that's sad. I know I've gone off topic a little bit here. This is the sad part of this story because not only have you got a good landlord, a good man suffering financially because of this tenant, you've also got a child that's gonna grow up following in his parents' footsteps and will no doubt feel that they are able to do the same thing and this is how you live life. And that is sad. So I hope that this tenant gets evicted quickly. What I'd also like to do, and I'm talking to a solicitor about this, I want to make sure that other landlords and other letting agents don't fall for these same fraudulent activities. And it seems to me that the government will allow a rogue landlord list, but they won't allow a rogue tenant list. For me, that's something, <laughs> I can't think of the name for what that is, but you get what I mean. I just think that's wrong. There has to be, if there is a tenant that's proven by a solicitor or in court to be fraudulent or similar, that has to be listed so that other landlords and other letting agents don't fall for it too. So what's my advice in all of this? Of course, I could say, get a letting agent to do all of this for you. In the modern day of landlording and lettings, unless you've got a proper infrastructure, all the right software, all the right technology, facilities, systems, processes, education, staff in place, then landlords should not be managing their own properties. Not anymore. Unfortunately, look, what it means is that a lot of landlords that have always done it and always looked after their own properties are going to have to rethink and you either set yourself up like a letting agent, which I'm more than happy to help with. I'm not saying everybody must use a letting agent. I advise you to use a good letting agent, but some landlords want to do it themselves. That's just life. Actually, some people invest in property and build a portfolio so that they can make that their job. Why do I say use a letting agent when a letting agent could probably have fell for these same activities? You have to look at the odds. You have to look at the chances. First of all, a letting agent is less likely to fall for fraudulent activities. The reason being that a letting agent lets hundreds and hundreds of properties. It's their job to let properties. And what that inevitably means is that they also are able, probably better than anybody, to spot bad tenants from the start. Now, I'm not saying in every case. This is your property investing. It's a property investment. 
So therefore, with any investment, whether you feel like you're an accidental landlord or an on-purpose landlord, it's still a property investment. You are invested in that property. There is a risk. There's always a risk. But I'm saying that a letting agent, a good letting agent, is more likely to spot a bad tenant before they move into your property than a regular landlord would be. Now, that might annoy some people. Some people might argue with that. I'm not, again, I'm not saying that every single individual letting agent is better than every single individual landlord. I'm saying that the odds or the chances or the, the percentage is higher for letting agents, meaning it's more likely that a letting agent will spot a bad tenant. So obviously I can say, just work with a letting agent. If you wanna use mine, fine, absolutely. More than happy to connect you up with my lettings team or have a chat with me yourself, that's up to you. Or if you don't wanna use my letting agent, find yourself a good letting agent. That's my advice. Secondly, when it comes to a guarantor, speak to the guarantor. Have a verbal conversation with the guarantor. With the employer, have a verbal conversation with the employer. If you're gonna do this yourself, verbal conversations are better, especially nowadays where we're so digital. We hide behind emails. We just see an email come in and just assume that that's all correct. Verbal conversations or even face-to-face -face conversations beat all of that. And lastly, remove any kind of emotion from all of this. Stick to the facts. If something doesn't add up, it doesn't add up. Don't just move a tenant in because you like them. Stick to the facts, do the referencing, and if you want to use my letting agency, just contact me. You can email me direct. It's tom at sonegroup.co.uk.